not. <laughs> well, today we've got Stacia um, Keo. Have I said that correctly? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for coming on Women in Action podcast with Bev Jessup. And um, I'm really excited to hear about storytelling because it is like a foundation, foundational skill for any business. Um, so tell us where you're from and um, um, what you do. Yeah, well, thanks so much for having me on uh, Women in Action. Um, I am originally from Ohio in America, uh, which is like from England. It's kind of like being from Wolverhampton. It's <laughs> it's really kind of the middle of everything. It's considered very much the Americana dipstick of uh, where people start their marketing because they, they know this is like the quintessential America, but I uh, lived in, uh, went to uni in uh, Boulder, Colorado. So I climbed and skied and did all kinds of things like that. And then I moved up to Seattle, um, which is where I really uh, was a, a jobbing actor and a storyteller in residence for many, many years. And then I, um, I got my citizenship, uh, my Irish citizenship, and because I would spend uh, time with my cousins in Ireland and really explored that kind of my family because I was constantly getting cast in Irish plays. <laughs> and so I really explored that. And my thought was I would, I would go and live in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And um, I was doing some study abroad work with uh, New York University doing my uh, drama and education masters. And I uh, was down, we, we, we were touring around in London and we did some youth theater work in, in Ireland. And then um, I, I was a, a jobbing actor and I had uh, people saying, oh, well, you should, uh, you should go to uh, one of the conservatories because that's where the real actors train. So I um, auditioned for Lambda and I was invited to do a summer program but I, instead of doing that, I went ahead and did a, um, a professional actor training program in, um, at Ealing uh, in the drum studio there. And then afterwards, I, I, I had to, I just started going to work and, and started touring and working um, out of London. So I, I, went, I went to London for a year, about 25 years ago. <laughs> Love London. I know I love London because I, I was brought up in London, so I can see why you didn't move on. <laughs> so, much. Uh, so tell me what inspired you to get into te uh, storytelling. Well, storytelling, I, I grew up with storytelling um, all the time. I mean, uh, and this is something that is a skill that sometimes we have to end up teaching um, young mothers now because with all the electronic interventions, we, we don't really do the, the conversational storytelling and the game playing and what, what we call social routines, which are the, are the actual um, foundations of conversation and turn-taking and socialization. So, yeah. I, I mean, when I grew up, you know, it was all the patty cake games and all the call and response games and the storytelling uh, came from my mom who uh, loved to tell stories and she loved to include all the character voices, which made it really fun and animated. And then she would also make wry asides about, well, I don't know why they went and did that. Well, if they did that, they're going to really regret it, you know, <laughs> things like that. We're like, mom, that's not what it says. So... <laughs> it started to give me license to kind of lift it off the page and make it my own. Uh, mm -hmm. And then when I was um, in, uh, in Denver, uh, the uh, Dr. Seuss exhibit came to the Children's Museum. And I grew up uh, learning to read with Dr. Seuss, which has a 15 Oh, I love, I love those books. Yeah, I think I did learn as well, learning how to read with those books. And, and my children did as well. So yeah, mm -hmm. they're, they're wonderful, aren't they? What's your favorite story of Dr. Seuss? Do you have one? Well, uh, one of the one of the um, the well, the ABC ones remind me of those, but I'm trying to think now which ones it is. Um, oh, you said green the eggs and the ham. Green <laughs> eggs and ham. I was, was going to say something with bananas, but no, I knew it was something to do with food. <laughs> So they, it's it, the children's museums, as you know, are interactive with like a ball pool and all sorts of things like that. So oh. uh, they needed um, 
they needed actors to and and stand ups and and play workers to bring the interpretation off the walls because this had been an exhibit that went to like proper museums and things and uh and so that's what we did and this was in the late 80s when multiculturalism was on the curriculum and so when mm -hmm. the schools would come through the teachers would say wow you're so good come to our school and um, help us work with this multiculturalism that we have to deliver. And so that's what I did. I would go into the schools and we would um, tell stories, origin myths is what we started with. So that it was like, this is where people come from. This is where people say they come from. Mm -hmm. And then it was the teaching tales. And then you got a, a sense of, this is why people do things in this culture the way they do, because this is what they believe and given their environment and their culture this is what experience has taught them and this is how and why like the mountains are the way they are or the coyote has his smile or you know the river runs this way instead of that and they were a lot of fun and so the, the children could learn about uh different cultures and each other in a real organic way about learning about how people actually talk about themselves yes i think i mean because i'm a speech therapist and i do deal with um people who are struggling with communication and and uh, narrative skills and being able to tell stories and do the social aspects of language as well um i do think communicate um storytelling particularly is so important isn't it for all aspects particularly in business because i think sometimes we feel a bit shy about telling our background story. And um, I, I am getting used to that idea because I'm sort of thinking about being um, an immigrant in this country, sort of coming um, as someone who wasn't actually born here. And I think those sort of experiences, your past experiences, your personal experiences has an impact in the way that you deal with life or deal with business and things like that. And so, um, I think it's important to get that across in your messaging when you say, well, you know, I, I came from a background where maybe girls uh, weren't seen as something that, you know, someone who would um, excel in their studies or they had to try a little bit harder than the boys in the family um, in order to get there. And that all impacts on the way you um, run a business or even start a business. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, um, I that has had an impact on my life in that I say things like well if you are worried about getting clients for instance you know there might be some backstories that is the sort of um I guess block story blocks almost where you yeah. think oh I can't do that because, mm. um, because I'm an Asian woman or or I won't get you know they won't be able to identify me or I'm not good enough or whatever and you've got to <laughs> kind of unravel those yeah. sort of like blocks um mm. in order to move forward and um to then you know be able to offer your services to a wider audience or or to an audience that might actually identify with that story mm, absolutely i mean when i uh, as a lambda teacher that's one of the things that uh, we're teaching is communication in a public forum and i worked primarily in girls boarding schools and so you know you're working with a mix of of, of students and then uh, many of them, uh, besides their Lambda, they would say, oh, can you work with uh, so-and-so because she's got to do a, uh, an art scholarship or a drama scholarship. And part of that is the interview. Well, you get people that are from Asian cultures and Oriental cultures where women are, are, are supposed to keep their eyes cast down. They're not supposed, they're never supposed to talk about themselves. They're never supposed to like, you know, talk about themselves in like a, a, a really positive or glowing way, sort of like blow their own horn. That's considered really bold and rude and, and, and awful. So, you know, they would talk with their hands in front of their mouth or they would talk themselves down. You know, you would compliment them on something and they would say, no, no, no. And, and so you're like, no, you have to, if you want this scholarship, you have to big yourself up a little bit. And it was uh, very You difficult. have to blow your own trumpet because if you've got a story, you can't hide it you have to blow your own trumpet because otherwise they won't know what you have done I mean you know no one knows if you, 
for example, you know, I've been working for 30 years, but no one had been following me around for 30 years to find out what <laughs> I've been doing with these different clients across yeah. my career. Uh, yeah exactly so I think you know seeing that it really you know I was very impassioned to you know get give um young girls especially the kind of the confidence and the skill to use the voice because it's kind of a twofold skill that I uh, bring to my work with storytelling I help people find their story and then structure it because there's a little bit of like well it's you know, I don't know how to tell it and that's really true because it has to follow a structure depending on especially in business what you want the outcome to be so what's the purpose of the story business stories are purpose told stories so do mm. you want to bond your community together so that's gathering um team members or you know really bonding with your community gathering them together as a tribe is it about persuasion getting them to do uh, things differently or buy from you or maybe it's uh to envision which is set uh talk setting out your purpose and where mm. you want to go next and that's really important especially talking about your bigger game and your bigger purpose when you're looking Looking, um, for investment and scaling to grow your team because you want people that want to come along that say, yeah, I'm in on that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I understand where they're going and, and I have something I can contribute to that. And with uh, investors and they can say, yeah, I can see where that's going to go. And I, they're, they want to buy, they want to be a part of that action. Yeah. So, so, I mean, do you think that like your purpose, whatever the purpose is, is the same thing as the problem or the struggle that the client is facing for example if I have clients who say to me well I'm struggling at the moment with uh, persuading schools to take on online speech therapy because they've been so used to the speech therapist coming into the schools mm -hmm. delivering the program and then leaving and then coming back next week and now you're asking them to do it on on a screen and they're thinking mm -hmm. oh, I don't know if it'll work is, and that's the problem they're facing. Is that the same thing as the purpose? Uh, no, I think that they, those are obstacles, you know, and your purpose is always is going to be to, to deliver this, this uh, service, right? And, and your purpose is to um, allow people to speak and to, and to really communicate uh, as, as their best self. Yeah. And what's happening now is you have to kind of look at, you know, well, what's holding you back? And then those are the obstacles. And you say, ah, so if this is your problem, what if this? What if that? Mm -hmm. And so because uh, in a story, the character runs up against problems all the time. In fact, if you don't have any conflict in a story, you don't have much of a story because a uh, story can be boiled down into three words, really. And that is conflict changes life because yeah. that's what happens. You come up against a, 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 an obstacle and a conflict and it's like, hmm, what are we going to do about this? And that's when the story really begins. If you think about it, um, you go once upon a time, and th these are the three stages of a story. You know, you you set up the normal. This is the setting. This is how it is. This is how it's always been. You know, mm -hmm. but now there's like no water, or or the king and the queen can't have a child. You know, this is an obstacle. This is a problem. Or mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you know. Um, everything gets swept away. Ooh, what are we going to do now? And so uh, it's when things get knocked out of balance. And so then, then the story begins because then we need to restore the balance, get the wisdom. And there's always an object of desire that, that we're trying or something that we're trying to achieve in that story. <clears throat> That's the same with actors in a scene. You know, you have to identify, you know, okay, what, what are the rules of play here? What, what, what are all the social rules? What's the physical landscape like? Um, what's the uh, relationships here in this, in this story, in this scene? And then the other thing that's really important is the inner. What's the story that you're telling yourself? Because that's the most important story going. It's that story you tell yourself. So what's yeah. that inner dialogue? Um, Nike doesn't exceptional job with uh, this in, in that their uh, main character in every story is you. And it's your, you represent the protagonist and the antagonist because it's that struggle that you have with yourself about, you know, getting out and actually doing the sport, getting out and going for the run or trying out for the team or 
you know, um, challenging yourself to go, to go further. They mm -hmm. never sell shoes. They never sell equipment. You never see that. They, they, you see people using it. So product placement, but they're yeah. talking about striving. They're talking about the feeling you get when, when you compete, they're talking about the sweat they're talking yeah. about, you know, how good like that on their, their Christmas ads are also very good. And that's what, as a, as a business owner, we, sometimes what we do struggle with is that is promoting ourselves in a story form so that it doesn't look like we're constantly saying buy buy me buy me buy me but you're actually telling a story about how your service can help someone yeah um, and uh, have a how make that transformation in that person's life yeah, you've hit on it. It's it's uh it's the transformation is what you're what everybody's selling, and and that's what everybody's buying actually. And that's the uh, that's the value story. So the value story never talks about the product. It never really talks about you know this service I'm selling. You know tell them. Uh, you know, tell them, um, not telemedicine, but uh, teletherapy. Um, I am selling communication, you know, and, and the difference that it makes in someone's life to be able mm -hmm. to communicate is, is huge. It's like taking the cork out of a bottle. All of a sudden, you know, you've got access to someone who's got a million different thoughts in their head, a million different ideas, and lots of other ability besides just the typical ones. The other thing that occurs to me with um, the, the service that you provide, Beverly, is that we are all online now. It is essential. It, I mean, before it was really important communication because we worked more in groups and worked more through communication than on paper. But mm -hmm. now, absolutely. And you have to be able to use the camera in order to communicate. That's right. Yeah. So yeah. It you have to get over <laughs> yeah. You have to get over that phobia and that um, shyness because I'm not, I wouldn't say. Um, I'm an extrovert, you know, I quite like my, I've just discovered that I'm quite an introvert, really, I like to have my own space. And, you know, it takes a lot of energy to do something like this, for instance. But it's great talking to different people and getting different ideas and different perspectives. Um, but after I probably need to go and have a lie down you know, and recharge my batteries. But, you know, if you want people to know about your services, you do have to communicate them. And even with even with my clients, you know, I have uh, quite a few clients have had strokes and, you know, the frustration is the mm. feeling again, the frustrations that they have in their newfound disability, you know, and the thinking that will it ever get better and or what, what, what sort mm. of what, how long will it take and, you know, the impatience and the even anger, you know, all those feelings co come through during the sessions and you have to deal with them mm. and um, encourage them and, and um, tell them a story. I usually end up having to tell a story to encourage them as well. So stories mm. come into all aspects, don't they? Of our, Absolutely. Our, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. what stories do is, is they, they're not fantasy. I mean, even stories that are fantasy, when you hear um, science fiction writers talk about their stories, like Ursula Le Guin was a favorite of mine. And she talks about the utter logic that needs to be so clear in a story. You need to have um, set those rules of play and really have a logic to go with it. So um, facts figure big in a story because they're sort of the, the they give you the, the sort of the bones of it. And um, what story does is give context to those facts so that we have some sort of idea a point of reference and mm -hmm. we can like you know when people say you know from here to the moon you know i think ah, oh, that's a long way when you when you when you quantify it as a, it's this many pitches it takes this you know this much time so you know you you give these kind of uh things just uh, on a simple point of data you know yeah. and Brené brown talks about this as well as about um because we have so much at the moment of um people talk about cancel culture and fake news and all of this and actually stories without any facts are called confabulations and we tell them all the time because we we need to fill a gap that's what happens in a story when we don't know our minds open up and there's a gap 
just like with yeah. the patients, they don't understand why this isn't working. So you have to explain to them in a, in a bit of a story about how physio physiologically your voice, your face, your muscles work. Yeah. And, and then, then it's like, Okay, so now then I understand that I can work with it better. But um, uh, Penny Brown think, talks about this as well, about yeah, we, I think, something I, happens. I think, some, I think sometimes though, um, as when I work with clients, um, mainly stroke patients, is they tell you a story in a short space of time. Like for instance, this morning, this uh, client was telling me about how he had a pro some one of his one he's a carpenter he's a plumber and a carpenter and one of his customers rang him up to say that they had a plumbing issue and then they asked him about his speech and why he was speaking in that way and he had to admit they had a stroke and so she immediately came to his rescue if you like and said oh i know someone who's um had that problem um i'll get get in touch with that person they will they will speak to you so within three minutes that person rang up and said yes I had a stroke um, 10 years ago and um, I had to keep on telling myself I will beat this bloody thing you know <laughs> yeah. telling himself that that phrase again and again so he told this told my client that that's what he needs to do he needs to keep on saying this affirmation that he will do this and and then he told me that I don't know why but I started crying after I carried on saying that affirmation again and again and I thought what was interesting is that I thought that was a story in itself but then he went on to tell me two more stories of grief and this was all all these three stories were told within 10 minutes um, and he told me how he lost his nephew that weekend and his nephew has left a, a young wife with young children and then later on, he met um, another widow um, who works in a care home and she lost her husband that weekend um, from COVID. Mm. And, and now she's left with two young children as well. So he's experienced grief um, of, from two, uh, two sources, but also his own grief in terms of his communication mm. skills. And, and that was all sort of tied together within 10 minutes. And it, it was, uh, it had that link of that you need to affirm yourself to encourage yourself to get through things. Because mm. if you, if you do just say, oh, these things are awful, COVID's awful, I can't get over this block. Mm. You know, you're telling your brain, mm. oh, well, yeah. I'll just take a back seat and yeah. I can't get out of my comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's really important. Um, what you just said about those stories is that the other thing that uh, storytelling does is it builds empathy because um, an empathy isn't like the same exact experience, but it's experiencing the same emotion. And so even though your client hadn't lost a family member, thank God, but he'd lost his power of speech. So he really does know grief. Yeah. and. That, that is something, that is a loss. We've all yeah, lost. He had actually lost his nephew, so it's a family. So he did lose his nephew. But the yeah. thing is, is that, you know, he, um, you know, he, they relate and I've lost someone and I've lost someone too, you know, and, and, and so you have that connection and then we have that shared emotional uh, experience mm -hmm. as well. And so then we can, we can appreciate each other's um, behavior. We can appreciate each other um, hopes and dreams. We can appreciate each other's, um, you know, despair and and struggle, and and we can join with them in it because it's like then then you can say, yeah, we are in this together because we all have these same human emotions, and that's the thing that connects us. Really, it's not the monomyth. It's not like oh we all have the same morals, values, purposes. We all have different morals, values, and purposes, but we all grieve and we all have joy and we all love and we all um, have been betrayed at some point. And we all have had to learn something that to do something we've never done before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so we've all had these similar experiences, but they've played out differently. And we've, in, in, in telling those stories, we can share different um, 
instances about, well, how did I get around that? Or how did I do that? I said this to myself every day, I'm going to beat this bloody thing. And that gave me the, the courage and it focused my attention on what I'm going to do. I'm not going to struggle with this thing. I'm going to beat this thing. And in order to beat this thing, I'm going to have to approach it just the same way as an athlete approaches their race, the same way that, uh, you know, an adventurer approaches that road, <laughs> not knowing what's going to happen, but knowing that if you continue to put the work in and one step in front of the other, you will get further and you will get somewhere. And that was so kind of him to say, well, this has happened to me. And for that person to immediately hook on to like, I know someone and, yeah. you know, and connect yeah. you. And that, how mean, quickly they yeah. out. It, was, it was just amazing. It was an amazing story. It just happened this morning, as I said. Um, so it's fresh off the, off the press. But I mean, those mm. struggles, you learn, your, your clients um, tell you, um, but you can identify, as you said, you can empathize with them because you can also have similar struggles in that I have um, speech therapists saying to me, well, I'm, a, I'm just afraid of going on the screen. I'm afraid to show my face on Facebook. Why I can't work out. I'm, I'm afraid of the tech and whether, you know, when I see a client, will they all, all crash and I won't know how to get them back again. And all these fears that they might have and um it's it's interesting how we need to unlock those fears and tell the backstory as well as how you can break through that those fears. Mm -hmm. so what tips would yeah. you give then to if you were to give like three tips to someone who was just starting out um or thinking of starting out um as a, a teletherapist starting their own practice mm -hmm. what would you three tips would you give them? Uh, well, I'd say, first of all, don't think that you don't have a story because we all have stories. And I think I hear that a lot. People think, oh, I don't, my story is boring or I don't really have one or, you know, nobody wants to hear that. Yes, we do. You know, even the small things are really, really interesting and exciting um, to us because there's something that's not in our experience or there's something that we can relate to in our experience. People want two things from a story, and that is new information, which we all have. We all, we all sit on a mountain of experience, you know, and it's, it, it, we don't really even see it because we're sitting on it. <laughs> so to us, stuff that we think, oh, you know, I know that everybody knows it. Well, we don't, we don't know it. So that's why I would really encourage people to, to share their experience and to, um, and to, and to not be, not be afraid of, of relating that your stories aren't boring. They're, um, they're, and they don't have to be epic either. Either. They can just be small stories of, of losses, of gains, of, of transitions that you've made in your life. I always, um, many people come to me because they need to, my service allows them to find that story. We find their story, then we structure it. And then we, I work up with them on delivery tips, how to deliver it so that it doesn't sound like they're just, you know, saying out these words and blah, 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 because it's, it's a spoken art form and it's an audience formed art form. So it's kind of like if a tree falls in the forest, will anybody hear the sound? It's like your story needs to be told to another person so that they can respond to it and react to it. And that's how the story grows. So mm -hmm. look in those threshold moments. Don't be afraid. Don't think you don't have a story because if you've lived, if you've lived life, you got stories <laughs> and everybody's had to make choices and had threshold moments, whether they're life events or whether they're um, moments of transition between, you know, one job to another, one place to another, um, you know, uh, one decision to another, you know, people make decisions that change their life in incredibly. And then they think, oh, you know, those sliding door moments, if I, if I would have done this instead of that, what would my life be like? Um, exactly, yeah. I would say also, um, don't, uh, I would also say do fall in love with your, with your voice and your face, because that's what makes the story unique, you know, um, 
there isn't any it's it's I think we get so tied into because of the slick media that we have that it's got to be this um production value you know yeah. perfectly elocuted you know I have to sound a certain way it just needs to be clear mm. and it just needs to be sincere and it just needs to be um given freely you know yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, I think sometimes um, I, I can only speak for a speech therapist, but we're so used to communicating with our clients when the spotlight is on us. We think, oh, I wonder if my hair's in the right place or <laughs> have I said the right thing? Because, you know, this is going out to the world, the whole world. And I don't want people to think that I don't know what I'm talking about, you know, mm. or I'm a fraud or, you know, I slipped up on that word a few times so you know do I know my job or what you know um so yeah it's uh but if you're just authentic and you just go out there and you just be yourself mm -hmm. as long as you've got a message that they can resonate with and they can understand you know you should just tell it and not sort of think that oh I've got to edit it and I've got to be a different person you know you, mm -hmm. you just got to be yourself and not compare yourself with others mm -hmm. Yeah, it grows with the telling, I would say. So, you know, you start out telling it really to one other person, you know, and then telling it to a couple people and then telling it to three people. And the other half of storytelling is listening. So you're constantly, you know, you're telling and then you're listening because it's conversational is is the best. And it grows with the telling. And and I, I mean, we've all um, had, uh, you know, favorite family stories that are shared at um, different like, you know, gatherings and stuff. And it's like, oh, the, have I ever told you that? And yeah, yeah, you tell us every time, but we love to hear it. Children, for instance, um, love to hear their birth story, you know, because mm -hmm. how, tell me the day I was born, you know, never get tired of hearing that oh know? I don't know I think my kid I think my youngest gets tired of me telling how how traumatic the birth was <laughs> <laughs> and you know yeah I, I pile a whole load of guilt on him and think oh, I don't want to hear this you know <laughs> um but I got three boys and um so they all have different stories but I think the youngest was much much more much more traumatic actually so um it's it seems like a more interesting story than mm. the other two mm. <laughs> they, they, they you know we do hear it or, or tell me you know tell me how you know you guys met or tell me this or tell me that and that's another thing with the companies when when the employees really know what the company story is and it's part of the culture they feel so much more a part of it and they're so much um, more um able to talk to anybody about the business you know so you've got you know you've got all of those people that can spread your story because that's the other thing um storytellers when we talk about telling a story we say everybody that's ever told that story before stands behind me and everybody that's going to tell that story stands in front of me because it's an oral tradition so it's it, it has to be passed on it goes from my mouth to your ear so still the best sales is word of mouth <laughs> so yeah, it, yeah. It, and even when the person has passed away like I'm thinking of Steve Jobs and um, I still that story of him starting out in a I was a, starting out in the garage all right you know yeah. it, it, yeah. you still remember it even though he's he's being gone um so, you know, uh, I think sometimes we do think, though, that it has to be a rags to riches kind of story, and it doesn't really have to be that, does it? So many stories. I think the other thing that's happened in the culture, um, which is, you know, why I'm really passionate about getting people to tell their story, especially women, because we, we, we haven't heard from them, you know? We've only heard the hero quest. We've only heard from, like, pretty much uh, white male Europeans and the style of storytelling that, that, that they feel is strength. So when you get, um, there's a very popular book called Story Brand that's written by Donald Miller, who's an, he's an ad man and he's also a white Christian male from Tennessee. And it's a good book. And, but it's all about, you know, you know, your customer is the hero and you are the trusted guide, but that's not how every story plays out. And um, there's a book that I uh, loved and it's this um, Invisible Woman. 
and it's by uh, Carolyn uh, Credo Perez. And it talks about the fact that, you know, there's just a gender imbalance as to information and experiential information that's available to us. And that's why people, I'm passionate about getting people to tell their story because it's that lived experience. That's the wisdom that we need. It's not the company line. It's not some slick, you know, rags to riches thing at all. It's like, you know, what has your life been like and what have you struggled with? What have you experienced with and how did you come through that? I mean, especially with personal stories, there's three things that people want to know they want to know what experience taught you so you know mm -hmm. and they want to know um what you wish somebody would have told you and then they want to know how did you keep that voice and find your voice even in times of adversity because if you can share those three things that's what people want to know they don't want to know all the blood guts and gore and you don't have to reveal like you know like you see so many times in these reality shows i think people think that's a story that's not what's so interesting it's it's these things it's how you came through it's what what mm -hmm. how that changed you because again a, a story needs to have a transformation something has to have changed of course, it's yeah story. it's just the same old stuff so there's a normal that you set out what it was then there's the, the the what blew up and then there's how things are now what's the new normal the new reality the new, the change because if you come through a story something's lost and something's gained some things will have changed it changes you and that's what you want a story to do yeah yeah that's amazing that is really amazing so um it's been fascinating absolutely fun we could talk for ages but <laughs> um i know i don't know how long people people's walks are or jogs are as they listen to this podcast um but you know we will have to have you on here again um absolutely. another time so tell us how we can um get to find you and what you know what your contact details are we'll put them in the show notes in the transcript on on the podcast but um if you could let us know how people can get to know you get in touch and work with you that'd be really good yeah i have a website called story prez and that's uh story p-r-e-z and that's like storytelling and presentation skills and uh that's dot co dot uk and i am on linkedin stacia keo uh on linkedin uh, I'm on Instagram uh, at Stacia Story or Twitter at Story Stacia. <laughs> and you can wow. also drop me a, uh, an email if you uh, want to talk about stories or how you can find and tell yours. And that's at story at stachiakeo.co.uk. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And um, I will speak to you again, no doubt. Take care. Thank you. Okay, right. So, um,